Jesus breaks everything down, every commandment ever made, everything that he ever said that we should do. He breaks it down in two words. Two words. Follow me. Some of us, we follow all types of diets. We, we do meal preps and we, and we have workout plans to develop the body that we want, right? Everybody? Everybody? <laughs> but, we, but we're gonna be better, right? Well, you can go to the gym, but if you don't do nothing while you're there, then you just wasted an hour. Going to church isn't enough. At some point, you're gonna have to carry some of the weight. At some point, you're going to have to treat it like it's uh, some training. You're going to have to learn something new. You've got to be willing to stretch just a little bit. Everybody do this. Just reach out. Just stretch just a little bit. You have to do more than just be there. At some point, you've got to put a plan in action. So fortunately for us, Jesus, being our supermodel, he left us with a workout plan that will help all of us to look more like, to, to act more like, to walk more like, and to be more like Jesus. And some of you know the plan, it's recorded in Matthew chapter five, and many of us refer to it as the Beatitudes, and some call it the Sermon on the Mount. How many of you would agree with me that Jesus was a blessed man? Now, now I want you to hold that thought just for a second as you turn to your Bible to uh, Matthew chapter five, but I want to show you, uh, those of you who may not realize that Jesus was exactly a blessed man, what that really looks like to be blessed. And I know you think that being blessed is about what kind of clothes you wear and, and being blessed might be how good your health is. It might be what kind of car you drive and, and what your house is like. But what if I told you that none of that was an indication of being blessed? Would you believe me? What if Jesus said, would you believe that? So it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, we're, we're finding out what blessed looks like. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called what? Children, Children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And I don't know if you're catching it like I caught this. I really got excited when I began to read this because what we find out as we look at this text is that Jesus is absolutely positively countercultural. Because we say yes looks like this. But Jesus says yes looks nothing like that. Yes looks like this. He's totally Countercultural. He's changing the opinions of what people think blessed looks like. He's re redefining the meaning of blessed. He's opening our eyes to understand what blessings really look like. And in case you missed it, what Jesus is saying here is that blessed people have real estate, not just on the earth, but in the heavenly kingdom. What Jesus is saying is that they have peace in the time of trouble. And even if they don't look rich to our standards, he says they inherit the entire earth. That means that everything that we need, God will supply. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Everything we, the, the, the scriptures help us to understand that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything that's in it belongs to God. The Bible tells us that it was created by his will and for his pleasure. And what kind of father would not grant his children access to the things that they need? He is a, a good father. We sing this song all the time. You're a good, good father. And it's not we don't really capture or understand what God is revealing to us about himself, that he is good. He defines good. You know what? In fact, some people would say that he's better than good. 
He's, he's a good God. He's a worthy Father. He's, he's faithful to us. Jesus goes on to teach us that let the blessed people will be filled with righteousness. That means that they don't have to question if they are in right standing with God. You know why? Because right standing emanates out of them because of the God that's in them. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. See, see, do you mind if I keep going just for a little, just for a, a few more minutes? Jesus says in verse 7 that blessed people will be shown mercy. That means that although I deserve the worst, although I deserve the worst, God didn't give it to me. Anybody bless my house? Let me know. Bless means, bless means that my eyes will see God in all of his glory. Bless means being called a child of God, and that is good news for the person whose earthly father rejected or abused you. That God says you will be called his son. That God says that you will be called his daughter. And that's good news for somebody's earthly father who walked out on you because even though he wasn't there, we have a heavenly father who promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. It's an old song that they, they used to sing that said, Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he made his hat was his home. And we <laughs> All he left us was alone. And if that was your day, then guess what? That is good news to somebody who knows that they're blessed because they know that they have a father in heaven that will stand with them when nobody else will. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, that we have been given as his children the keys to the kingdom. And I hear a lot of people just clap your hands and shout, I'm blessed. Blessed is that that belong to God. It means that healing belongs to you. My back has been hurting me for a few weeks. And I'm standing up here today, and my back has been in excruciating pain this morning. But right as I was walking up this steps, I declared that I will not allow this back pain to control me. I'm declaring that I am healed in Jesus' name. And I believe it. I believe it. Bless me that certain things belong to me. Deliverance belongs to you. Wealth of this world belongs to you. Peace of mind belongs to you. If God has it, and if you dare to call yourself a child of God, in Jesus' name, go access what's yours. He's given you access to kingdom things. And we're afraid to claim jobs. We're afraid to claim them. We're, we are afraid to lay claim to our blessings because we don't want people to look at us like we're crazy because of the faith that we put in Jesus. But I don't want you to misunderstand what's going on today. I'm not preaching a prosperity gospel. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just name it, blame it, grab it, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the good news about Jesus Christ and the kingdom that he has preached and invited us to be a part of. As you read your Bible, you will come to admire the fact that Jesus is consistent. He's consistent in what he does. He's consistent in what he says. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm saying this because I want you to see that the best way to interpret what Jesus meant is to read what else Jesus said. That makes sense, doesn't it? In other words, the best way to interpret scripture is with scripture. So in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11, Jesus says, Blessed are you when people insult you. Yeah? When people call you names, when people call you a whole new role, when people say you're crazy for believing that, when people say you're crazy for going to church, blessed are those, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of Jesus. So in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus is telling us what happens to a person when God speaks well over them. When God speaks well over over you. So one more time before we go, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. See, we think 
that because we mourn that we're not blessed. Because trouble comes in our life, God must not be blessing us. Because we don't have all the wealth of the world, but we must not be blessed. But Jesus says it's the opposite. Blessed are the poor spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled with righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Do you ever want to know somebody who's really a child of God or not? Watch a conflict take, take place and see who the peacemaker is, and you'll probably be going God. Blessed are the poor, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of it. Rejoice, that means to have joy again. I know you've gone through some things, but have joy again. I know trouble came your way, but have joy joy again. I know you cried all night long, but have joy again. I know life didn't turn out the way you expected, but have joy again. And he says, be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So as I close, I want us to understand Paul's advice in 1 Timothy 4 and 12 to mean that it's not enough just to speak well. Supermodels do super things that make others want to be like. You know, and I know, that we are not in the business of reproducing us. We're not in the business of reproducing ourselves. We, we train and and we strive and we labor to look like Jesus in hopes that others will, will see Jesus in us and want to look like him too. Also, follow me as I follow the Christ. So my brothers, my sisters, my, my fellow champions in the day, let no one look down on you because you are young. But be an example to the believer in speech, in conduct, and next week we'll talk about love and what love looks like on a Super